All right, so after all that information, I'm gonna give you guys five of my favorite uh, mobility exercises and how I do them, and kind of how I incorporate that into my regular routine. Uh, so we're gonna start at the ankles today and we're gonna loosen up the calves. So for the calves, I use two lacrosse balls and I get in on the sides instead of at the bottom. So when I'm down here, I put one of the lacrosse balls underneath uh, the top of the calf, one on top, and I start to massage out the muscle itself. As I'm massaging out the muscle, I'm flossing through the full range of motion. Okay, so this helps to start to get rid of any of those knots and that tightness and open up that full range of motion in my ankle. I work in here for about 30 seconds to a minute and I work down the whole muscle, massaging in, getting into it really, anything that's really gross and naughty, then I get in there even more, okay? I continue to floss through that full range of motion and make sure these guys are ready to open up. It's really key for your ankle range um, to be in proper position for your overhead squat and your front squat so you can keep a more vertical torso as you go in and out of that squat. So once I've uh, loosened up both calves, um, then it's time to stretch them out. And when I stretch them out, I uh, go over to the wall and uh, I start to work in and out of that range of motion. So what that will look like is I'll find where the end range is by pushing my knee forward while my heel can still stay on the ground. Okay, and I'll find the, the back end of that range where my heel can stay on the ground and my knee can go forward and I'll floss in and out of that range. Okay, 10 times hanging out there when it's tight, coming in and out. And that will allow my knees to start to track forward more and open up that position. The next thing that we're gonna loosen up is our quads and hips. Uh, I like to use a rumble roller for that so I can get deep into the uh, quad muscles. And basically what I do is I start from the top of the knee and I work up into my hip, both along the outside and the inside of my quad. Um, I never roll on a joint itself because that's not good for the joint. It's not good for anything really. So um, I start with the foam roller on the bottom, I keep my core tight and I just work through the nasty tissue, the quad muscle itself, I spend time on the outside, I spend time on my VMO and the inside, I work up into my hip, I work into my adductor and I make sure that this guy loosens up completely. After that's all that tissue is loosened up, then there's two things I do. The first one is if I want to statically stretch out the muscle and get more range of motion, then I do a Bulgarian split squat stretch where I put my back foot on the bench. I sit down into the stretch, I keep my core tight, I keep my glute activated and I push my hips forward. This allows me to stretch out my quad and as I push my hips forward, I'll get more into the hip flexor area. This is great for static stretching. This I typically use after a workout. Before workout, I do a split squat, a foot elevated split squat stretch. So this way I can work dynamically in and out of the range of motion. I put my front foot on the box. My back foot stays straight. I'm on the ball of my foot. I keep this back leg straight, my chest up, my core tight and I sit down into that range and then I push out. You'll feel a nice good stretch on your hip flexor and I go in and out of that range. It gets a little deeper every time. What this allows me to do is sit in the bottom position with my lower back tight so that I don't get a butt wink where my pelvis comes under at the bottom. What happens is if I snatch, I catch something heavy and I get that butt wink happening, you're gonna lose your weight. You're not gonna be able to sit and stabilize the weight with a solid back. So I see tons of guys who are super strong, can uh, squat a million pounds, they get in that overhead squat position with a snatch, their butt winks under and they lose the weight every time. So to get rid of that, we're gonna loosen up those hips so you can sit down there with a nice stable position. All right guys, if, uh, if you're so tight that you can't get into these positions I'm talking about, um, then there's always, always ways to modify um, how you're doing it. So the first thing you can do is uh, put down a pad so that your knee sits higher and then you can help yourself by 
taking something like this or a PVC pipe where you can stabilize yourself and make it a lot easier to get in that range and hang out there. Uh, you'll see a lot, of, a lot of people will have to start it like this and try to open it up. But this, these uh, tools will help uh, people who are super tight get into better positions without as much problems, okay? Uh, next thing we're gonna do is get into the upper body. So uh, I'm gonna use my lacrosse ball here and I'm gonna get my chest to open up. So if you do a lot of CrossFit, a lot of bench pressing, uh, typically you're gonna create really short muscle up here. It pulls your shoulders forward. It puts them in a compromised position and it doesn't allow you to open up properly overhead. So the first thing we're gonna do is break down the tissue. We use a lacrosse ball. We're gonna find a, a wall or a beam and we're gonna roll up and down the chest in three different spots, starting with the inside. We're just gonna go up and down here, getting into any kind of knots, spending some time in there, hanging out. And then once you've released that section, you're gonna do three different flosses. The first one is a low five. The second one is a waiter. And the last one is going in and out of internal external rotation to loosen up everything in the chest area. Okay, this allows your chest to open up, your shoulders to sit back instead of it pulling you forward all the time. Okay, it should be able to open up. Um, again, 10 times in the inside, the middle, and the outside with those flosses every time. And uh, you'll notice a significant difference in how tight your chest feels. Okay, um, after we do that, we're actually gonna work on our T-spine before we get into a stretch. So I'll switch back to my rumble roller here and I'm gonna spend time going from my mid back to the base of my neck, up and down 20 times to release that tissue. If uh, rumble roller's too much for you, it's totally fine, grab a softer foam roller. I keep my core engaged the whole time I do this and I roll from base into the middle of my back and I just get that tissue to loosen up. After I do that, I want my T-spine to open up. So what I do is I keep my rib cage down by engaging my core and I open up through the T-spine as I reach back. The reason why I wanna do this is if I open up through my midsection, I'm losing my core stability. So if you can only um, open up through here, when you snatch, you won't be able to keep your core tight and you're gonna lose that weight. So if I train myself to keep my core engaged and I'll open my T-spine at the same time, then I'm getting into that range of motion I need to have while maintaining the uh, core stability I need to have to lift big weights, okay? So I floss in and out 10 times and I do it at the, at the base of where I start, in the middle of where I start, and at the end of where I am. And I open all of that range after I do that, to get everything to open up together, I grab a snatch grip on the bar. I go into a hollow body position and I'm gonna go in and out of my arch and hollow to open up my chest, my lats, and my T-spine. If you have a friend, they can help you out by pushing you in and out of that range very gently and you're gonna feel your chest open up, your lats start to open up, and you'll be able to hit a better overhead position with your upper body. Go through that sequence alone. It's gonna take you about half an hour, and the difference between when you start and when you end is gonna be night and day, and you're gonna have a way better position for either your overhead squat or your snatch.